Defence Minister Ng Ing Hen on Wednesday, February 28, announced that Singapore will buy eight F 35A jets, bringing the size of the Republic of Singapore Air Force's RSAF future F 35 fleet to 20 aircraft. Speaking at the Ministry of Defence's MINDEF budget debate in Parliament, Dr. Ng prefaced his speech by acknowledging that the world has become a more dangerous place, referencing the Russia-Ukraine and Israel-Hamas wars. He said a strong Singapore Armed Forces acts as a deterrence against aggression and adventurism. If Singaporeans will not, or cannot, defend Singapore, there is no backstop, he said. The latest purchase comes on top of existing orders for 12 F-35 jets of the Bavarian from U.S. manufacturer Lockheed Martin. Once all are operational, they will put Singapore's Air Force in the Premier League, said Dr. Ng. The F-35 S are expected to be delivered in around 2030 while the F-35 B jets ordered in 2020 and 2023 are projected to arrive in 2026 and 2028 respectively. Singapore is one of four countries in the Indo-Pacific region to acquire F-35s. Along with Australia, Japan and South Korea. Globally, F-35 users apart from the United States include Canada, Israel, the United Kingdom and other European powers. So what exactly will the F-35s bring to the table? And how are they different from the existing F-35BS on order? CNA spoke to three defense analysts to find out. The F-35A can fly further and carry more weapons than the F-35B, and this is tied to differences in how the two fighters operate. While the F-35B can take off over very short distances and perform vertical landings, the F-35A takes off and lands conventionally. The F-35B's abilities are valuable. In Landscare Singapore, the fighters will enhance Rusaf's operational flexibility while also boosting the country's resilience against attacks on its runways. These abilities come at a cost, however. The hardware that enables the F-35B to perform its takeoffs and landings takes up space, reducing the amount of fuel and weaponry it can carry. The F-35A, the conventional takeoff and landing variant, has a higher internal fuel capacity, allowing it to have greater endurance as compared to the B variant, MindEff said in a fact sheet issued on Thursday. Without the need for a leaf fan, which is present in the F 35B to provide the short takeoff and vertical landing capability, the F 35A is able to carry payloads of higher capacity. Thereby complementing the F 35B, and providing the RSAF with greater flexibility to meet our operational needs. The weapons payload for the F-35A is 8,160 kg, while the F-35B can carry a payload of 6. 800 kg, the greater payload, means being able to carry more air-to-air -air missiles, larger bombs internally, 2,000 pound 907 kg bombs versus 1,000 pound bombs and more bombs externally on the wings. Said Dr. Peter Layton, a visiting fellow at the Griffith Asia Institute. With 8,278 kg of internal fuel capacity, the F-35A has a range of 2,200 km. The F-35B, which can carry six. 125 kg of fuel internally has a range of 1,667 km. The F-35A is also cheaper than other F-35 variants because it is simpler in engineering terms, say Australian Strategic Policy Institute, senior analyst Ewan Graham. The Singapore government does not give detailed cost figures for the acquisition of planes, submarines and army platforms as these can provide an indication of capabilities. But the average price for F-35A jets to be delivered from 2023 to 2025 was reportedly about $82 US dollars. 5 million 111 million Singapore dollars, 
according to a United States government spokesperson. Additionally, maintenance costs for the two planes differ. The F-35B is more complex and costly to maintain and has lower reliability and availability, said Dr. Layton. With their ability to stay airborne longer while carrying more weapons, the F-35S could serve as reliable sentinels and a line of defense at a distance, said Dr. Layton. Given the numbers, the F-35A might have a primary role of being a highly survivable, stealthy in the sky that can data-link radar detections of approaching hostile aircraft back to Singaporean ground-based air defense missile systems, said Dr. Layton, adding that they would also be able to provide this data to RSAF's F-15SGs. The second use of the F-35S might be in an air defense role as a well-forward combat air patrol barrier relying on stealth to survive to attack approaching hostile aircraft. He continued. The F-35A could be a strike aircraft, but it has a limited range and payload compared to the F-15SG. Better to use the F-35A clean, with no external stores, so maximizing its stealth. In his speech, Dr. Ng also said that the F-35S would complement the F-35BS, an analyst that CNA spoke to highlighted this as a key benefit of RSAF having both aircraft variants. Illustrating this, Dr. Graham said that RSAF would be able to continue operating F-35BS if the runways used by F-35S are out of action. Dr. Layton, meanwhile, said that the F-35BS would be a viable fallback if Singaporean air bases are put out of action for a short time. Singapore will be one of just a handful of countries operating the two F-35 variants, and this says something about the country's standing, said Dr. Cynthia Cook, director of the Defence Industrial Initiatives Group at the Centre for Strategic and International Studies. This demonstrates Singapore's status as a highly capable partner she said. Dr. Cook said that a downside to having the two variants is that maintenance costs could go up. There are enough differences between the two aircraft that maintenance personnel may need additional training. And there will be different parts to manage for repair should a plan be to maintain any of these aircraft domestically, she said. Dr. Layton agreed, highlighting that the airframes and engines of the two planes are different. However, he noted that there might also be some savings, as both F-35 variants have similar electronics and may rely on similar simulators. The F-35 fighters will replace Singapore's aging fleet of F-16s, which are slated for retirement from the mid-2030s. The RSAF's future fleet of fighters will made up of F-35S, F-35BS and F-15SGs. Together, they will be able to perform the full suite of missions required to defend Singapore's skies. Lt. Colonel Zhang Jianwei, the head of RSAF's Next Generation Fighter Project Office, said at a media briefing on Monday. The F-15SG jets, which became fully operational in 2013, will do the heavy lifting as they can carry even greater payloads, he said. When asked why it was important for an air force to have a diversified fleet of fighters, Dr. Cook said they have different missions, different capabilities and different flying hour costs. A diverse fleet allows choices. Dr. Graham said the future fleet will be more diverse compared with the RSAF's current frontline mix of F-16 and F-15. Ensuring that the RSAF maximizes Singapore's very limited depth. That will count for more once Paya Lebar is shut down and the RSAF consolidates into Tenga and Chengji, he said. In his speech, Dr. Ng said that, with the three fighters, the RSAF of the future will be a capable air force, above all, to protect Singapore's skies.